Jones's career after that in the American Revolution uh, is, a, is a rather dull one, really. He returns back to America, and he's going to be given command of a ship of the line. Uh, during the Revolution, the Continental Congress agreed to build a very large ship of the line. These were the battleships of the 18th century. But here again, uh, something odd happens. Uh, during the course of the war, a French ship of the line, La Magnifique, had actually run aground in Boston Harbor and had sunk. Uh, to repay the French for their efforts in the war, it's decided that we'll give our own ship of the line, which we have named America, to the French. So Jones gets to command this ship for only a very brief moment of time, uh, actually only enough time to turn her over to the French. So that just doesn't go down very well. After the American Revolution, John Paul Jones becomes a sort of sailor of fortune. He uh, signs on to work for the Empress Catherine of Russia, and he becomes an admiral in the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Uh, it, apparently, he didn't get along very well with his Russian colleagues, and it wasn't a very successful story. Uh, so he comes back, and comes back to Paris. And while he's in Paris in the early 1790s, He's actually a point given a minor government appointment uh, by the American government. He's going to be an agent for prisoners. But in any case, he really has no great fame now. His fame is more or less diminished. And he dies in Paris. And he's buried in a Protestant cemetery. And over the generations, the Protestant cemetery is more or less forgotten. And certainly John Paul Jones is sort of forgotten until. Teddy Roosevelt is President of the United States. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, of course, had been the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, is a great naval enthusiast. And Roosevelt is trying to garner public support to increase the size of the American Navy, to get more support for big ships. It's about this time when the United States Minister to France uh, telegraphs uh, the State Department that they have found the body of John Paul Jones buried in this cemetery. And he was buried, by the way, in a cask of brandy. So the body has been mummified. Well, here's an opportunity. So the President of the United States decides we're bringing back to America our great naval hero. And it is done. He's brought back on the cruise of Brooklyn. Great ceremony, great ceremony. And by the way, for those interested in knowing a bit more about this, there's actually a book published about the return of John Paul Jones's body with photographs. Uh, and you can actually see the mummified body. It kind of looks like him, preserved very well. Well, in any case, John Paul Jones is brought back with all of this hoopla. And of course, today he lies in repose at the United States Naval Academy. He's in this grand ceremonial crypt in the basement of, of the chapel, the Naval Academy, buried in this, oh, not buried, but displayed sort of, in this grand marble sarcophagus that's held aloft by four leaping dolphins. Uh, so John Paul Jones, this great naval hero, is probably buried in more splendor than I can think of any other American.